In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to configure IT analytics to support HTTPS connections through the Apache layer. It's a good way to secure your connections moving from port 80, which was the default installation. We'll go ahead and enable port 443 for more secure connections. For purposes of this video, I'm going to be using and uh, creating a self-signed certificate. Um, self-signed certificates are appropriate for lab settings. I do not recommend them for a production environment. If you you're going to take the effort to secure your connections in your environment. You owe it to yourself to get a proper uh, CA issued certificate. There will be advantages to you to do that, including the fact that any browser, any of your yourself or your customers that are accessing a proper commercially issued CA certificate won't get browser warnings and the data collector should be able to trust that certificate implicitly not requiring you to take the additional steps of copying the certificate onto the data collector and needing to register that key the certificate key file into the data collector you can do that but again if you're going to really protect something that particularly is customer public facing absolutely get a proper commercial certificate Okay, end of speech. What I will do at this stage from an installation approach, our system administrator guide recommends that we go ahead and put our work inside of opt Apache conf. And in here, we'll go ahead and make a directory called SSL underscore cert. I wanna go ahead and just immediately set that up so that nobody but root can make changes to this folder. The reason for that is your key file and, and the certificate in particular the key file are going to be stored in here when we're done and we'd like those to be secure. My approach for this video is going to be that we're going to create a SAN certificate subject alternate name which means a single certificate can support more than one URL and the so what we're going to do in this presentation is we're going to go ahead and set up a, a configuration file to support creation of that subject alternate name certificate. So I have that laid out here, kind of talking through the building blocks of it. You can change these values. The default bit size for this is 4096. You can see for my self-signed certificate, I've entered this information. You will need to do similar. C is a two letter code state is fully spelled out, etc., etc. And then the other interesting part beyond a regular kind of command line approach is that we're invoking a v3 um, call to set up subject alternate name. And then you can see in there that in addition to the common name, which is I've decided to put the IT analytics portal .rsv as portal UI certificate field. The URL for that, we're also going to go ahead and provision the data receiver under the same certificate. And that data receiver will be asked to listen on IT analytics agent .rsv. So the file configured as shown, this is really just instructions for a command. So we'll go ahead and quit out of here. And to create that file, we're going to go ahead and I'll paste in a command that I've already written into my notepad here. The syntax is as shown. It's going to be an X509 certificate. It's going to be creating a new key, new private key. RSA is the 4096 bits, SHA-256, as we saw in the configuration. The days here for self-signed certificate, this is 10 year certificate. For a commercial certificate, the new standards are you can't go more than a year, the life of a certificate. Just be aware of that. Uh, nodes, key out, and then this is the key file name that we're going to specify. And this is the certificate name that this file will create. And last but not least, we're asking it to read the configuration instructions from the file that we edited called sand.cnf. So when I execute that, it goes ahead and it creates the key and the file for us. And if we look at the listing in here in our temp directory, we can see there's our key file and there is our certificate. Now at this stage, I like to kind of have confidence as I move along here that things are looking good. If I just cat the certificate that we just created through that command, I'm going to go ahead and copy this certificate in. There is a command that you can run from the command prompt that would read this for you and read it back and see how it reads. I actually prefer to use a, a site called Certificate Decoder from SSL Shopper. Most of the commercial certificate issuers offer similar capabilities. This is just the one that I blundered into back in the day. And you can just paste our certificate text in there and 
this decoder will read it and come back and read through it and we can see that its common name is the portal. The subject alternate names include the portal and the agent. Everything else that I had entered in there, notice the valid from and valid to dates. There's roughly that 10 year span that we specified. Who's it issued by? This is not a trusted authority and it gets a serial number. All of that gives me confidence that the certificate is properly formed. The next thing that we can do is go ahead and put the contents of our work into our SSL directory. So I'm going to go ahead and CP both of those files that we created to so if having done that, we CD back into our SSL cert directory, we should see our key file and our certificate file. Now we can go ahead and begin to step into making changes within the Apache configuration files to enable SSL. In anticipation of that, let's go ahead and stop our, our services, at least the, um, the Tomcat and the Apache pieces. We don't need to stop Oracle. So the agent is the data receiver, portal, is the UI. And last but not least, because we're going to be changing Apache configurations, is the job Apache. Cool. The first file that we're going to go ahead and change after bringing the services, the Tomcat and Apache down, is to go ahead and edit the file in opt Apache conf, edit the file httpd.conf. If you haven't already made a copy of this file, do so. Always a good idea to make a backup copy of anything configuration-wise that you're going to be making changes to. Always have a safe safe return. I've already got a copy of this created, so we'll go ahead and proceed. And right towards the top of the file, you can see a comment that says uncomment the include line to enable SSL. So we're going to go ahead and delete that comment. We need to also uncomment that line. So we're asking to load the SSL module. And we're going to also then have it invoke reading another additional script for SSL configuration. That's what those, those two changes do for us. That's all the changes that we need to make in this file unless we wanted to completely shut down port 80 traffic. If we wanted to close this portal down to only accept HTTPS, you can do that either through commenting out both of the virtual, all the entries under the virtual host blocks for the portal and the data receiver, or you could, if you want to be slightly friendlier, you could redirect traffic that might be coming in on port 80. You could redirect that over to port 443. Even a redirect, some security measures may not care for that. So if you want to be super secure, you can just go ahead and delete out or comment out these virtual host entries. For this video, I'm going to go ahead and leave it so that we could receive traffic on either port 80 or port 443. Save our file, our change. And then the other file that we need to change is our httpd-ssl, and that is in the extra directory. Again, if you haven't got a copy of our backup copy made, do so before taking this step. And then this is where we're telling Apache how to listen. We can see that it was at time of installation, it was set up for the domain name that I specified in the certificate. IT Analytics Portal.rsv is one of the virtual hosts, and the other one further down in the file is called IT Analytics Agent. Now the piece that we're going to change here, now we will be reading our SSL configuration, is you'll note there's a couple of entries in here for the name where we're going to go ahead and put in our SSL certificate file. And we need to make sure that the path and the file name for that matches what we specified. I had to just look and make sure that the name that we specified with our self-signed certificate in this video was ita-rsv.crt. And the other thing that you will need to specify, and you need to do this in both virtual host entries, is the key file name. And that happens to be also ita-rsv key key file. That's the name kind of indicates that's the secret sauce. Make sure you keep that key file, keep it protected. So let's go in here. As I mentioned, we need to make the same certificate because it's a SAN certificate. We can use the same certificate for both virtual host entries. So we we'll make that change for both the, of course, the certificate name and the key file name. If you have a commercial certificate, you're also going to get a certificate chain file from your issuing authority and you would make sure that you also had that intermediate chain file in the same SSL conf directory and 
you would point to it here. In this case, because we're using self-signed, we don't have that, so we'll leave it commented. Save our changes. And one of the things that I like to do after making httpd-ssl and httpd.conf changes is just check my syntax. We can do that with a command in Linux. It's opt patchy bin patchy ctl T. So this is not an unexpected message, and it's good to catch it at this stage. The solution for this is to go ahead and run a simple command to point to the libraries. So um, the fix for that is we go into user slash lib64, and we create a symbolic link to point to the, the two libraries. So yeah, even though we only saw the one for uh, mod SSL, I confidently can state that we would need to run those commands for either case. I mean, if you see one, you're going to see both. And then after resolving that path to the libraries that are needed for the SSL, now we get a syntax OK. At this juncture, we should be in a position to go ahead and make a couple more changes, one of which would be to go into our portal conf directory. And in here, we want to vi the file called portal.properties. And down towards the bottom, if we're really setting ourselves up to take advantage of HTTPS, we should go ahead and change the entry for our portal application URL to reflect HTTPS. We'll save that. All right, at that point, let's go ahead and start our services. This is a shortcut rather than having me need to explicitly declare each of the Tomcat and Apache layers. This will just walk through starting with the Oracle stack. If it's already running, we can see a message for that and then the rest of the services get started if they're not already running. And we can see our Tomcat portal, Tomcat agent, and our Apache web services have all started. To really get a good test of this, what I'm going to need to do is because this is not in DNS at the moment, I will go ahead and need to make an entry in my local host file to be able to resolve that URL. So I want to confirm that I know the IP address. And then what we can do is go into Notepad. You run Notepad as an administrator. I just got the caution. I want to run it as administrator. I said I did. By going in through Notepad as an administrator, I can go to Windows System 32 drivers Etsy, change my file list here, Go into hosts. I'm going to go ahead and add in our IP address. We have two URLs use the same IP address. Okay, I've saved that work. Let's try to go to a browser, paste in our URL. By default, Chrome and similar browsers are going to resolve an address. If we don't explicitly declare it, it would be HTTPS. Just to be double sure, I'm going to go ahead and specify that here. And it is a self-signed certificate, and we get this connection is not private. If I click on Advanced, I can proceed to it with, of course, the, the scary message that it's not secure, not safe. And you'll know Chrome gives indication that it's not happy with the certificate. And we can see why. There's no CA root certificate. It's not trusted. That's what you get with self-signed. However, by acknowledging we were able to um, continue to get in, if I log in, one of the things that you'll likely want to do is go ahead into your data collectors. And if you have data collectors provisioned, you'll note that there will now be an ability to enable SSL for that data collector. And then ongoing connections from that data collector will be over uh, SSL. Now the trick to that to remember is if you make that change on the portal and you've already got data collectors installed, you're going to need to go to those data collectors and you're going to need to make a change in the URL for where that collector is pointing to. In this environment, I've only defined the data collector. I haven't actually got any policies under it yet, nor have I installed it. So I could just proceed with using the key file that was produced. And when I install the data collector, I would just be sure to specify that it's going to be an HTTPS connection rather than a HTTP, i.e. port 80 connection. At that point, data collector should accept traffic. Everything should be good to go. And in fact, we would be able to see a similar message from the data receiver. All that was set up as IT analytics agents.rsv. Again, this is why you will need to go ahead and install the certificate on your data collector. There are instructions for how to do that. If I go ahead and accept it, proceeding to it, we'll see that data collector, once we navigate through the cautions about the certificate being self-signed, and see the data receiver is flying back to us.
if you started with a data collector that was set for port 80 for HTTP connection, I'll show you how to change that over to HTTPS at this point. So wherever your data collector home is, in this case on the Windows uh, data collector, I've been put it on the E drive under uh, DC IT Analytics, where we want to navigate inside of that home then is under MBS Conf. The file of interest is collector.properties. If we look at that file, we can see some of the key information that we entered when we keyed in at data collector installation time. In particular here, this is an example of the format that you would use for a secure socket layer connection. So you would adjust your URL to HTTPS, whatever your data receiver is set to, and then after saving this file, you'll want to do an update config on the collector and then restart services. That should cause the communications to continue at that point instead of using port 80, using port 443 secure socket connections.